Welcome everyone. So I want to tell about uh, my experience with open access in the context of uh, a diamond open access journal that is a GTCAM, which, uh, that's a journal of theoretical, computational, and applied mechanics. And in particular, I joined this journal to deal with data sets and curation of data sets. So that's uh, what I will be talking about. But I will start with a s small introduction of why a diamond open access in a Maybe a bit uh, in a militant way, but uh, I think it's the right place to do it. I apologize for everyone knowing everything I will be talking about. But um, what is the role? What do we expect for, from journals? Are these things registration? So the fact that we can say with the author certification, so that validation. The fact that we can have a peer review system, so that brings it brings value to, to, to the piece of information that we keep in journals. Dissemination, how to distribute, and, and archiving so that it's not lost in time. And I want to put it in, cont in uh, contrast with the FAIR. So what is a FAIR? It's findable, so we, we need permanent links, things that uh, are uh, allowing somehow the archiving, archiving to, be, uh, to be sustainable. We want this to be accessible, so we, we need online services. So it's, it's, uh, it's uh, in the modern era with the internet, we, we need something uh, that is online. We need it to be interoperable, so we need file formats, standards, um, and access to data that is in a certain way uh, exchangeable, reusable. And that's the reusable, so, and that's where actually, is it applicable to journals? It's certainly applicable to data sets, but with, with journal in, in a sense, uh, I'm, I'm coming, uh, I mean, I'm a researcher for quite some years, and at some point we, we were not necessarily expecting data sets, so now it's, it's a standard. But uh, how can you make it reusable if you don't have the data sets? That's a, a probably a mystery to me. Okay, so um, I still want to, uh, to, uh, to do a, a little uh, history of, of things so that you, we know where we come from, we're coming from so that I can explain a little bit where we are now. Okay, so these are two citations uh, advocating for this. And so I base this very, very little history on, on two uh, citations that are here that I highly recommend you to, to read. So my slides will be uh, online somewhere. I've been told by the organization of this, uh, of the, of this uh, uh, event. So you will be able to link, to, to, to click, but please read them if, you, if you're interested. And the history starts with uh, basically the uh, university presses uh, and, and that are quite old age, and also the copyright. So you, you might notice that the copyright and uh, uh, how we function in the way copyrights are organized it's quite recent, actually. Uh, and then, after the World War II, uh, we were having a lot of money that um, amounted to, I'm going very fast and proposed, but here, the, the thing is that we have the creation of a lot of thematic journals. And so that's, that's correlated to, to some author by the fact that we had a lot of money appearing at that point. And so because we have a lot of, of uh, journals, we also have the impact factor that is appearing. And the rise of the journal subscription cre creates a crisis so that we, we have to find a solution. So it leads to the creation of uh, the now to become archive. And uh, because we have some more subscription rise, we have some more problems. Okay, so that's where the advent of open access appears. Here again, it's something I go very fast, but um, you can see that uh, the APC system is, is, uh, is appearing in 2000 already. And that uh, nowadays we are right into it and, and that we have strategies uh, from the uh, Swiss universities and the national uh, Swiss plan about open access. We also have very recently uh, the fact that UNESCO Diamond Open Access Global Alliance was created. And so that's, that's, that's a big signal where uh, Diamond Open Access could be um, um, something that is good for the society. Okay, and so if I look at the Swiss national open access strategy, uh, we have the gold route, green route. So I, again, go very fast because we have seen this uh, in several talks. Uh, but I want to stress here that it's not because we have this uh, uh, gold open access model that we have no problem. In a sense, you see some other flow. It's very simplified, but the, the cash flow for, for the uh, processing of the, of the publishing system. And so because we have removed the open access, we have uh, removed the cost from librarians to... Um, to uh, to uh, access uh, the, the data because it's open somehow. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's no problem in Europe because actually uh, the, the author have to pay. And in a sense, it's, uh, it's normal because we have to pay for a service. 
Uh, but I guess the problem is in the IPC size. Okay, so here it's one article, so I'm really happy to have uh, someone in this room to tell me that there are other estimates that are maybe more accurate, maybe a bit different. But here in this paper, uh, that is from 2021, the average cost is about 400 bucks. Okay, and so the APCs are known to scale with the impact factor somehow. So it's a mechanism that self uh, uh, sustains itself. Okay, so but here we can see that uh, largest APC, so that's again an extract from uh, 2000, uh, we don't have the date for here, but it's, it's an extract from uh, 2022, sorry, it, it's here. And we see that, so, well, if you compare to 400 bucks, you, I mean, at least we could expect a bit of uh, transparency about this. Okay, but um, again, I'm basing my argument on some, someone else's work, so I'm happy to, to be refined. I'm just saying, okay, it's, and we have seen a talk from, from uh, other countries, uh, from, from, from uh, SUSA uh, uh, America, and we see that it's a problem to have such a PC. Okay? And it's also a problem to, to some editors, because here I show the example where uh, in neurosciences, uh, um, uh, a team of editors decided to resign and to uh, assemble a new journal, so losing the name of the journal, to a MIT uh, uh, a press, so that they... they could actually diminish the, 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 the APCs that, they, that, were, that were asked for from the editor. Okay, so all this being said, so we can say that APCs are, are maybe acceptable in some cases and there is some work to do. Uh, I'm inside of the journal, so I, I can tell you there is a lot of work, but I will present the Diamond Open Access alternative here, and in particular the GTCAM. So what is Diamond Open Access? It's a, a journal where you have no fees for the reader or the author. On top of it, we have uh, clubbed together this with the, journal, the concept of overlay journals. Well, so what is an overlay journal? So we use already freely available online text. So we use repositories like HL in the case of the GTCAM. It could be archive also. Or any repository that is public. It could be info science at EPFL. It doesn't really matter because what the journal will bring is the fact that it adds a review system on top of a repository. Okay? And... Um, what we gain is that we have an editorial process that is entirely controlled by us. So we do exactly what we want, uh, up to the copy editing. Well, it, it comes with responsibilities, and therefore we have work, right? We, we do the copy editing, and it's, it doesn't mean nothing to do the copy editing. And we probably would not scale. Uh, we, don't, we don't do, um, we are not a big journal, so I'm happy also to discuss this and the strategies on how to scale. So there are limitations. But still, we are happy with the freedom that we get. Okay, so we also can do this because of the uh, uh, support from uh, basically the French government through the uh, C, uh, uh, CDSC, uh, which is basically an instance uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, the CNRS uh, in the year. Okay, and we deal with a lot, uh, a wide spectrum of, of, uh, of, 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 uh, of thematics. We publish open reviews and we include data sets. Okay, so how does it go uh, for the publications? That's simple, and I will, again, go very fast. The author will submit a paper somewhere in the repository. Okay, it's emitting a preprint. Okay, that is version one. That goes to the editor and then to the reviewers in the most cl classical way that you can imagine. And then if there are some reviews, we might emit a second preprint, in also uh, published or, uh, at the moment uh, we, start the, we proceed through, through the steps. And finally, when we are PZ, GTCAM will edit and do the copy editing. Uh, we will publish the review, and we will uh, be sure that we publish also the links to the software uh, and the versions that are of the software that are used and the data sets. Okay? So um, the problematic that we see that is important is something that has been uh, referred to uh, before also. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is uh, the fact that we have... Um, um, uh, that we have the metrics uh, that are uh, not, we are, we're not indexed basically. And so we have a lot of uh, reluctant authors to, uh, that fear for the impact to submit there. On the other hand, if we take the, uh, the, these metrics, they are somehow trying or they have a huge incentive to increase the number of publications. And it's uh, opposite to the uh, DORA or COARA uh, uh, assessments. So probably it's uh, something that we 
uh, would not. So I will speak a little bit, very, very quickly about uh, data sets, because I said. So the journal policies of the data sets uh, are, could be classified. For example, I, I picked this classification in Springer. So you have type one to four, where the type four is the most restrictive, where you want to publish everything. And uh, it, it's a journal in computational mechanics. So we actually uh, should be able to produce everything. So the simulation inputs, the simulations themselves, version, and everything. And uh, our uh, other editors deal with this problem. They are actually making new journals. That's logical because they want probably to have APCs on them. And so they have journals that are reviewing the data sets. And I think that's a, probably not a good, so, not so good idea. And I want to um, uh, advocate for the fact that we, we should put them together. So it makes sense that the review of the paper and data sets should be clubbed together. And my personal belief is that the editors should play a role. Um, this is a creation policy, not very interesting. We are obviously very open. And as it has been said before, it's not so interesting to have a policy if you have no mechanisms to enforce it. And that's our project. So the uh, dissemination of computational solid mechanics. That's a project that's got funded thanks to the uh, ORD uh, mechanism by the ETH board. And we have developed a software that is capable of doing the, the curation of, of data sets. Uh, I, yeah. And so maybe because I'm in a rush, um, what we develop is some more like a novel leaf for data sets. Okay? So it's something that allows you to launch your curation system and your routines on top of a data set that has been submitted by an author to be able to have a, a, a review system, an automatic set of checks to edit the metadata and so on and so forth. On the uh, slides that you might get again from, from the organization of this event, you will be able to see an example an anecdote I can say about this one, which is very good, that this is a data set from experimental value that we have packaged and curated in such a way that a numeration like me could use it and run a simulation starting from this experimental uh, uh, thing. And even the author s saw the huge values that there is in this. They get automatically uh, a data set on, on Zenodo, a data set on Renku with a Jupyter lab that is attached to it, so they can start to play. So reusability is inherent in the system, and uh, therefore they can, they can advance. Okay? Um, I know, probably I'm. Uh, so that's the. That's How much time do you have? No, none, right? <laughs> Nothing? Okay. So that's. Uh, that's uh, some of the overleaf kind of system, and so it's a distributed system. If you think of Git like uh, something that is distributed to operate about code, SolidEPS and, and our project is meant like this. So in principle, you can attach to every uh, uh, storage capacities. That could be uh, on Zenodo, that could be S3, that could be any of the library uh, system in every university. That's where we aim at. It's not there yet, but we are going there. And so the final data creation management in GTCAM is nothing but this. So we iterate in this loop with the author. So there's a mechanism to exchange comments and to do reviews re for real on the, over the data. And once we're ready, we emit uh, exports to Renku, thanks to the SDSC, and to Zenodo for archiving over long term. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, yeah, open access uh, problematic uh, public money should be a public, uh, lead to public good. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. No. There's no, no. There's no battery anymore. Okay. <laughs> so um, no fees to author or reader is good. We have the freedom to choose what is the driving force in our journal. So I think it's it's a immense value, but that's not for no cost. We have to rely on on uh, institutions uh, paying some of some of these services but it's quite uh, moderate. Uh, the, Bibler, the matrix is a, is a big problem in, in, uh, in the acceptance of the researchers, I believe, for, for this, and we have to work on this. We have to work on the DORA and CORA uh, uh, incentive in making uh, the uh, position uh, committees to, uh, to um, use these kind of uh, um, uh, alternatives as a requirement for, for positions. And I'm sorry, uh, I had a a few minutes more. I'm happy to receive your questions.